from Alice. Hello everyone in Germany, friends and family, I'm Poland. Today Dad and I'm, Tatush and I are working on the car. We get engine to go in this. We have a very uh, powerful little engine here, very, very cool. So now we are doing more modifications in the shed and, uh, and Dad is loving it, aren't you? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Here we are in the shed, and today we are going to get the car out. We have to take this outside so we can get in there and do some work. Basically, we need to cut this floor pan here out to fit this new one in. Because the small one that's original is far too small. It needs to have a bigger one in so the engine will fit in there. So here we are in Brucey's shed. Brucey is my dad standing right here and a special friend Dudek from Poland. He's one of our family members. Today is a very special occasion because we are starting dad's car up with his motor in it for the very first time since, how many years ago did you pull it apart? Well, about 1980. 1980, there you go. So the first time in almost 40 years, this thing is gonna start up today with a much bigger, better, stronger, faster engine in it than it ever had from factory. We've put a lot of time and a lot of work into doing this. We've been very blessed to have a lot of people that are in the know helping us with this. Shout out to Andy Ortlop and the family there. They've been fantastic in helping us get this thing to where it is today. So let's try and start this thing because I really want you guys to see this. It's the first time ever this engine's been started since rebuild and uh, since it's been in the car. Juice. You keep moving the timing, though. Yep, you do the timing. She's finally out of the shed. We're just about to get her on a truck and get it up to Gawler so we can get some more work done on it. This time we're having the accelerator linkages done so we can get the accelerator pedal to operate the carby. And off she goes again. Okay, so here's a 1960 EK Holden with a 179 red motor in it. We've put a high compression head on it, done all the bits and pieces to it, and we're going to give it a start up. Right, here we go. It hasn't been started in a while, so we'll just give it a go. Coming up to the fuel pump, you can see the fuel in here bubbling away. 
and it's got to get all the way up this line here into the carburetor, which is a twin barrel Stromberg. Once it gets into the carburetor, we'll be right. So we're just hand injecting it using a syringe at the moment until it fires over. behind me means a lot to my dad and it means a lot to me as well. It's been in our family since its second owner since the early 1980s. My dad bought this car off my auntie and uncle who had had it since new and basically it stayed with him in the shed since about 1987 when he started to pull it apart to restore it. The reason it stalled was because in 1989 I was born and that put a big clanger on the project going any further. So for the next couple of years after I was born, Dad was focused on working and allowing us to be able to go to school. So we didn't really have a lot of time as you know things like kids can do when they come along. So I really wanted to help Dad and it was my lifelong dream to see his car back on the road after he spent so much of his time working to put us through school and sacrificing his time so that us kids could be able to have a good life. After school, I decided to do an apprenticeship at Toyota and I learned how to become a car mechanic. The reason I wanted to become a car mechanic was to be able to help dad put this car back together. You see, my dad Bruce was a train driver and he drove many famous trains like the Overland, the Indian Pacific and the GAN. However, that meant that he was away from home a fair bit and he was also just a train driver. So he didn't know how to put a car back together. What he'd done was pull the car apart into a thousand pieces, absolutely everything stripped. He started to do the restoration process by having the shell acid dipped, by having every nut and bolt sandblasted and cad uh, plated, and then got to a point where he realized he just didn't have the expertise. So what had happened, Deck? is that dad had a mate in his backyard shed that said he could paint this car. And he decided to paint it a Volkswagen green. The only problem was there was no primer, there was no undercoat. It was just a two pack green on top of the bare shell. And after the shell sat since about 1992 till about 2009, the paint started to flake off because the groundwork and preparation wasn't done properly. When I left school in 2005, I took up an apprenticeship with Toyota. I really wanted to be able to learn how to put this car back together and finish it for dad because he'd taken so much of his time to invest in sacrificing his time to put us through school. This car originally came out with a 138 cubic inch gray motor, straight six. We've put a 179 red motor in it, which is something that was quite common to do back in the day. We've put a high compression head on it, high torque starter motor, electronic ignition, and a full HR disc brake front end cross member with VB Commodore rack and pinion steering. One of the cool mods we wanted to do is make this car drivable. We wanted to be able to give it the right feel so that when it's on the road and dad's a bit older, it has a really nice brake pedal feel. One thing we really wanted to do with this build was to make sure that the car stopped and handled good so that you can just get in and it feels like a normal car on the brake pedal. So with the help of some family, I don't have friends, I got family. We were able to make up this extension for the brake booster, which has a Chevy Camaro brake master cylinder on there for the disc brake front and just to be able to give it that booster over hydraulic pedal feel like in any normal modern car. Years ago, dad saw a picture of pearl coated steering wheels and he kept the business card of these colors of steering wheels and he always wanted to do this to his car. So last year we sent off the steering wheel and the accessory trims on the dash to be pearl coated and it came up really, really nice. In fact, a lot of this car's paintwork is completed. It just needs minor touch-ups and all of the electrical system has been completed and just needs to be 
hooked up with a brand new wiring loom. We really want to keep this bench seat in the car because that's something mum and dad really love. Check this out. Have a look at this stain right here. See that? I often tell dad that that's probably my brothers and sisters that never made it. <laughs> Hopefully one day I'll have the chance to be able to date and find my future wife and take her out in this car. The rear diff has also been fully replaced and overhauled. It's been fitted with a custom tail shaft and the Celica Supra 5 speed floor shift gearbox. In 1989, Brucey purchased a full rubber kit for this car. Unfortunately, due to the age of the rubber, most of it's perished, so we just need a new rubber kit for the car. We've raided the rare spares catalog for most things like ignition barrels, door locks, all of the parts, badges that we could possibly think of to get. We're not expecting a handout here. What we need is help to put this back together.